Hey guys, it's Drew here at Card of My Eye, and today I have a video that's kind of a sequel to yesterday's video, and if you did not watch yesterday's video, check it out right there. The link will be on the screen right there. You can go check it out. It was all about different types of mists and basically how you could use each one and what are in the mists and how they work. So if I were you, I would highly suggest to go check out um, yesterday's video because um, this is going to be sort of a sequel to it, and that is on paint or mist slash paint splattering. And I'm going to teach you a couple different techniques on how to do um, mist slash paint splattering, if that makes sense. And basically what that is, is I have it shown on this layout here. Can you see it? This is, um, th this is paint, this is mist splatters. And I actually don't have a layout with any paint splattering, but I'm going to teach you that as well. I have made a couple, but they are in design team um, things that I cannot show. And then here are some paint splatters that are larger on this layout here, if you could see that there. So paint splatters, I use them all the time. It's, it seems to be a big, really big trending topic right now in scrapbooking is splattering your paint or mist everywhere. And there are actually different ways and tips and tricks of how to achieve different types of splatters, which I want to show with you today. And basically there is the basic splatter and I'm going to be using the Mr. Huey's mist. And I think I'll actually use it in the Bonnie blue just because it's a bit of a darker color to show you. And basically, this is how this is how I normally do it if I'm just going to do a basic splatter. Is I take the the whole unscrew the whole lid and you're going to have it like this. There's going to be mist on this por portion here or liquid. And all you're going to do is simply tap your finger and splatter the mist onto your piece of paper or whatever project you're working on. And that is a basic splatter. And you can see how much I got splattered on there, but I just totally love the look and it's great if you guys want to add more blank space but you don't feel like it's finished is if you just add some splattering and you're all done. And you could totally mix your colors as well just like that and you could add some orange in there and just mix it up so you can mix your colors also. But um, a lot of people are curious on how to achieve bigger drops and um, that was sort of a hard thing for me when I first started doing the paint splattering but here's a tip. You could actually take the top off and splatter directly down and you just sort of go down and it does take a little bit of force but you're going to achieve bigger drops can you see that but some of you guys probably still want bigger bigger drops of um mist can you see how those are slightly larger than these ones here that's how you can achieve it but you could also simply take it and tap it and um create your own mist bubbles and create into as big as you'd like and then just sort of tap around it which will make it appear as if it was shot out of your or tapped off of your piece as an actual like larger piece and it will start to spread across your paper can you see how it's spreading it actually does look like a paint drop and it's just a larger one you could also tap it if you want to and you can get some really neat um, like lines and stuff. Uh, it's really fun. So those are the two basic ways. But also, if you want to achieve a more larger splatter, you could actually take your paint or your thing and you could squirt it a couple of little times. Like, do not press all the way down. You're just going to start to slowly... I'm going to make sure I don't actually do this, but you're just going to do it to where some of the mist is coming out of the top. Can you see how there's just a little droplet of mist coming out of the top? And you're basically, you're just going to squeeze it a little bit until mist starts to slightly come out, but it doesn't spray. And you could do that a couple of times until you get uh, um, sort of a collection of mist on there. And you could tap your full um, piece to get some off. And that wasn't a good one there, but if you do it... Well, I sprayed it. Did you see how, how I sprayed it? It's kind of hard to do that, which is typically why I um, like to pull it off. But isn't that cool still? If you sort of let the air bubbles compress in there, because now it's not really going to do that. And Mr. Huey sort of gives you that effect anyways, but you can get a more... Um, you can control it more if you actually tap your sprays on like that. So that's another way. It's not a great way, but if you do want to build up larger drops, you could keep doing that and keep doing that until you have like a large glob, and then you could smack it down and it will um, glob on, it'll create a large blob like that, if that makes sense on your project or whatever you're working on. And then there is paint, um, which also, I'm going to, I'm not going to go to paint exactly yet. I'm going to do one more in the actual mist category. And that is you could use a paintbrush. Now, all of my actual paintbrushes are at our local art store getting cleaned because the lady, uh, the, the art, my art teacher owns our local art store. And so, um, 
she was cleaning my brushes, but I only have this nasty brush that I use for texture. If you want to, just a tip if all in this video, if you want to add texture to your painting, get a, put gesso on a brush and let it completely dry. Then when you paint it on, it kind of looks like wood grain. And I have an older video on how to make a wood grain, wood grain, wood grain frame that um, I did a while back. But you could also take a paintbrush and take your mist and simply dip your paintbrush into your mist. Of course, um, a paintbrush with like clean, clean bristles will probably work much better. And then you could add bigger drops like that, um, which again, allows you for a little bit more control, but they are a little bit bigger. And again, you could paint on the actual drop if you want to just get quite a bit on your brush. You could actually just paint on the drop and it will look as if as if you splattered and then you can just add some splatters around it which will give it that appearance. But as you can see that one wasn't the best. And then we're going to move on to paint and let's say you don't have any mists but you, you have paint and you want to do this technique and as you can see you do get inky um, from this but if you have paint you could take a little bowl such as this one and I am going to grab some paint here. I just have some aqua paint dauber from Tim Holtz. And you're just going to pour a little bit in. And be careful. I tend to pour way too much in a container. You're only going to need a little bit. Just about that much. And you can cap it off. This is the Adirondack acrylic paint dauber. As you can see, I have just a little bit of paint. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. So I have a little bit of bluish paint in there. It probably looks white on your screen, at least it doesn't mind. Then you can take some water, I just have a water bottle here, and you can just pour some water in it. You're gonna want a little bit watered down. Whoa, that was way too much water. So I'm gonna pour some back into this water bottle. I'll just throw the water bottle away. Oh, lovely. Um, but basically, you're gonna do that, and then you can simply stir your paint into your water just like this, and this has a little bit of that blue mist on it, but you could stir your paint into your water. You're going to get a watered down consistency. Just like that. This will not look very good because I don't physically, I don't actually have, um, I, I didn't do the ratios right. And then I'm going to splatter the paint down, and it's more of an opaque coverage so you're going to get a more opaque looking. If you want to splatter it over like a photo or something, this would work a lot better than the mist because you're going to get a more opaque coverage because the paint is an opaque um, solution, I guess you could say. So that is basically um, some tips and tricks on how to splatter your paint. I got a lot of questions yesterday after I did that video on how to create larger paint splatters, which was the main comment was um, larger paint splatters. And that's sort of how I do larger paint splatters. In case you're curious, paintbrushes work great for larger paint splatters and then just using the end of this as a paintbrush and just creating your own droplet on there works great as a paint splatter as well. So I hope that gave you some ideas and sorry about spilling my water everywhere um, and while I was mixing my paint up, but it's all right. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to go check out my blog post for today where I will show you guys um, in pictures how to do the same thing. So thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you all next time. Bye, everyone.